Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we'll be taking a look at Elementary OS 6.1. Using Elementary OS over the past week has demonstrated to me many of the things that can make a great Linux distribution. This is incredibly cohesive and elegant to use. The entire system is bundled together so tightly. It's integrated very well. Uh, there's a fantastic app distribution platform that encourages developers to make apps for Linux um, and offers users a way to help donate to those developers that they're interested in supporting. But at the same time, I've also noticed some very glaring flaws, at least in my opinion, with how uh, this distribution, how Elementary OS and the development team has approached this platform. Uh, and we'll definitely take a look at both sides of those, but I'd, I really want to start with the positives here because there's a lot of great things. Of course, Elementary OS here is using the Pantheon desktop environment. Uh, it, they're the ones that created this in the first place. It's spread to a few other distros, but this is where it all began and this is where it's arguably the best experience. Uh, everything is so cohesive, just looking in the system settings. You know, it's a fairly, everything looks fairly nice, uh, but so many of these options and settings are just fantastically laid out. Um, you know, we've got our default apps here. We can uh, manage any application set to start up by default. Uh, and this really great permissions section that lets us manage uh, granular permissions for each of the applications installed on the system. This cohesiveness continues throughout the rest of the system. Uh, there are a bunch of unique settings specific to elementary OS that are that really just add up to a great experience. Uh, managing notifications for each of your applications is fantastic. It's a lot like you'd expect on your smartphone. You can choose exactly if and how each application gets to send notifications. There's a fantastic housekeeping feature that will automatically have the system delete temporary and trashed files if you'd like. Even a lot of your standard settings, things like Bluetooth and networking, just have a really nice interface here. Everything's been designed from the ground up to integrate very well into the system. Uh, they have a nice new online accounts section that lets you uh, add all of your online accounts. A lot of these aren't inherently new features, but they're just integrated so well into the system. Even the little details, like being able to pick a dynamic accent color that it chooses based on your desktop background. And you know, then tick boxes and radio buttons all uh, change color according to your desktop. Little details that make this a very nice experience. Everything has nice smooth animations, all of the applications, at least all of the built-in ones, have a very similar visual style. You know, there's a very, uh, th there's a common user interface across all of the default applications that just makes using elementary OS a really enjoyable experience. Uh, speaking of applications, looking at some of the built-in ones, we've got what you would come to expect here. We have the App Center, which we'll get into more in a moment because this is also another big part of Elementary OS. You've got utilities like your calculator, calendar, camera. Code is your default text editor. And you've got a document viewer. Your files browser, which is custom designed for Elementary. It looks a lot like the GNOME file browser, Nautilus, but it's it's been tweaked for Elementary OS here. We've got Mail, which is another great application. I haven't hooked up an account yet, but as you can see, again, the user interface falls in line with all of their other built-in applications. Very clean, very straightforward. Got your multitasking view. This is great, it's like your workspace switcher. Uh, you can use your arrow keys or scroll between these. Very easy to navigate around. Got the music application, which uh, it's a lot like Rhythmbox on Ubuntu. Uh, once again, it you know inherits this design of all of the other built-in elementary apps. Photos follows a similar story. A nice little screenshot utility. System settings. Tasks is sort of like a reminders application. Uh, and in fact, 
If you have reminders in any of your online accounts, it can sync those into here. We have your terminal, which again is custom designed for elementary OS. Very nice, clean interface. And finally, we have the videos application and web. This is using the GNOME web browser, Epiphany, but it just so happens that the user interface for it falls in line very nicely with everything else in elementary OS. So I think that's certainly a good choice. I have found little quirks with how this renders some web pages, so you may still wish to install Firefox or Chromium or the like. But overall, it works nicely. It's very clean. It's fairly fast. Of course, along the top bar here where you have your date and time, this is also where your calendar and any events you have today reside. Uh, and then on the top right, you have your indicators for things like volume and microphone. Uh, your network connection, Bluetooth. Here we've got our notifications as well as a do not disturb toggle. And of course, a quick uh, link to your notification settings to manage how different apps uh, can or can't display notifications. And your system settings for uh, power off, suspend, logout, and the like. Now, diving into the App Center real quickly, this is the other big appeal of elementary OS. Uh, applications in here uh, fall into one of two categories. There are curated and non-curated applications. Curated apps are programs that the elementary team have personally vetted uh, when they've been submitted to the App Store, and they've made sure it does exactly as it advertises. They have to be; Those apps have to be built to very specific guidelines that fall in line with the user interface of elementary OS. And so if we take a look at one of our applications here, we'll look at this game, for example, Sage. And we can see in the screenshots here that, you know, it has this very similar minimal top toolbar like a lot of elementary applications do. Uh, as an example of a curated app. And if we take a look at one other, take a look at Big Purple Remote which is a Roku remote. As you can see, it again has a similar interface style uh, as a lot of other apps for elementary OS. This also demonstrates the other appeal to the elementary OS App Center, which is this pay what you can ecosystem. You notice a lot of these applications have prices tied to them. That is the developer's recommended donation price. That's what they feel that their application is worth. Now, for any of these applications, you can choose to pay the amount that they have here, or you can enter any amount of your choosing, including nothing if you're not quite ready to pay for that application. You want to try it out first, then that's perfectly fine. If you decide it is really good, it does what you want, then it gives you a single point to come back to to donate directly to that developer if you'd like to. And this is a fantastic way to get Linux developers on board uh, in an ecosystem that's dominated by free apps that rely heavily on donations as their source of income in order to continue development. This gives you a single point to come back to, to donate to app developers that have done a good job and that you enjoy using their apps. Now, as much as I love the App Center as an idea, as a concept, it also begins to show some of what I feel are the weaknesses in elementary OS. So if you start digging through the App Center to look for all the software you're familiar with, you'll notice it doesn't have a lot of it. You know, simple things that are sort of staples on Linux, you can get them in pretty much any Linux distribution, especially anything that's based on Ubuntu, such as this, uh, they're not here. Now, for example, for screen recording, simple screen recorder is an incredibly common app, but it is not found in here, despite being in the Ubuntu repositories. And the reason for that is that Elementary OS's App Center only supports Flatpak applications, which is uh, different than the regular software that is found in the standard Ubuntu repositories. So any application that's not packaged as a Flatpak 
isn't readily available, uh, at least through the Graphical Software Center, in elementary OS. And in fact, this issue extends even further. Uh, by default, when I first came in here, uh, after setting this up, a lot of standard applications, uh, even things like Steam and LibreOffice, weren't available. Now they are, but there's a specific reason for that. Uh, to get a lot of these applications, you have to go through a Flatpak service or repository such as Flathub. This is really the central place for getting a lot of Flatpaks. Uh, and this is fine. You can just go here to flathub.org and browse for the apps. Um, but until you install one of these Flathub apps through this website, that Flathub repository won't appear in the software center. So now apps like Steam are showing up because I've installed one of them from, I've installed an app from Flathub. So now the majority of these are showing up. But even things like LibreOffice, which aren't installed by default, weren't visible in the software center until I installed something from the Flathub website. Then suddenly, uh, the system pulled in all of that repository information and is showing many of those apps now. Uh, but for a new user who's not familiar with this, they're going to come into the software center and have no idea where most of these applications are. And this issue extends even further to applications that aren't packaged as flat packs. Flat pack has certainly gained a lot of ground in the last year or so, but there are still many applications that just aren't built for it. And a lot of them still use the standard uh, Debian packages found in the regular Ubuntu repositories. And there's no graphical way to install those applications, at least that I've found, in elementary OS. And you have to resort to the terminal. All of the software is still here and available, but not through a graphical interface. For example, we saw that Simple Screen Recorder wasn't available in the Software Center, and it's not available as a flat pack. It's in the Ubuntu repositories, but not visible graphically in elementary OS. We have to go into the terminal and uh, do sudo app install Simple Screen Recorder. And as you can see here, the package is available. It's asking if we want to install it but there's no way to do this graphically. And coming from a distribution that's so cohesive and intertwined as Elementary OS, and considering their very own website says, Elementary OS is designed so that the typical user should never have to open a terminal, this just seems like a glaring omission. The fact that there is no way to graphically support these pieces of software that are in the regular Ubuntu repositories that this distribution is based off of. Now sure, you could install the default GNOME software application that's found in Ubuntu. And this should allow you to find a lot of that software, but now you're dealing with two separate app centers that really should not be necessary in a distribution that's looking to be this cohesive and, you know, well put together. And now here, as you see, we can find this software that's in the standard Ubuntu repositories. But this, by default, doesn't show flat packs, so you're still going to have the need for two app centers. Elementary OS's reasoning for switching to flat packs exclusively is largely for the sake of security and privacy. Uh, flat packs inherently sandbox many of the permissions that applications are allowed so that they can't intertwine with other parts of the system and you can more granularly control what the apps have access to. But doing this has caused a very uh, awkward and detached software landscape where a lot of the software people are coming to expect just isn't available here. And it's not that it can't be, it's not that the repositories aren't there, it's just not shown visually to users. And the only way to get it is to open up a terminal and install it that way, which is exactly what they're saying users shouldn't have to be doing. I really want to love Elementary OS. It is an absolutely beautiful system with some amazing, cohesive, elegant features. And honestly, I still recommend that you try it. If all of the software you're looking for is available in the Software Center 
or via Flat Hub's website, or you're willing to go into the terminal to install anything from the Ubuntu repositories that isn't available in the App Center, then this may be a perfectly capable distribution for you. It's a fantastic experience overall. But for someone that is looking for the most seamless experience they can possibly get, not just with the default system and apps, but also any third-party apps that they may need to install, then unfortunately I may have to recommend a pass on this one, which really hurts because I love so much about this, but until a clearer, more cohesive direction is determined by the elementary team for their third-party software, it's very hard to recommend this to the new user. So I hope that you guys have all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it very insightful. If you did like it, a thumbs up is always appreciated. I always love to read comments if you'd like to leave any on the video. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest content, then I recommend that you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. I hope you've enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you next time.